Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, the 15th of February, 2015, ending Friday the 20th. Hope you had a good trading week. Charts, as usual, brought to you by eSignal. Here's a look first at the U.S. dollar index. Actually been flat for the last uh, couple of weeks after a steady rise from August through January. Uh, nothing new to report in terms of exhaustion counts. We're still looking at a uh, target on the downside would be that red static trend line. And uh, if we base long enough and hold above that, next breakout would obviously be the motivation to head higher. Here's a look at the euro dollar, also equally flat, no surprise there. Uh, pound dollar has recovered a bit from the dip it's taken over the last several months, showing a little more signs of strength than the euro dollar was. Here's the Australian dollar uh, hanging near the lows of the recent period, down near the uh, 0.7765 zone, if you will. And uh, finally, the New Zealand dollar has bounced just a little bit, but was very, 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 very flat the last week and a half or so. I'll throw in the pound yen. You can see here the pound definitely recovering a bit, and you can see it as well here as you did in the other pair. Let's look at the intra-week action, see what uh, came up. First of all, uh, here's the euro dollar in 30 minute bars. And again, this was a very out of the blue, unexciting week. It was actually slow in stocks and futures as well, uh, not just in the Forex market, but after having several next weeks in a row, uh, and then we had that Swiss announcement a couple of weeks ago, things have seemed just a little off since then. It may take some time for the shock uh, to recover out of the market and get us back to normal. But here's the whole week. And you can see we opened very flat Monday. We only traded 80 pips of range Monday, 70 or 60 pips on Tuesday, about 60 pips on Wednesday. Thursday, we finally moved up a bit. Friday, we were very flat again. Those are not normal ranges for us. Usually, we see, we've been seeing about 120, 100 so pips per day. And the last couple of weeks, we actually saw about 300 pips for the week. This week was only 160 pips of range on the euro dollar. Uh, here's the pound dollar, which was a little bit stronger, but again, it was a big news announcement out of... Uh, England on Thursday that caused the big spike that's not really tradable and other than that it was kind of a contained week even with that spike that's only 220 pips of range for the whole week so everything was just slower than we've been seeing and uh, not much else that we can hang our hat on in terms of trading for the way that the technicals have played out all right let's take a look at the news that's coming out this week now we do have a short week here in the US Monday is the President's Day holiday it's a US bank holiday we will not be making calls Sunday night going into Monday, although we will post our levels for those who like to trade anyways. Uh, we'll resume calls going into Tuesday. So data coming out for this week, uh, Sunday night in New Zealand, retail sales, then Japan and their preliminary GDP for the first quarter, the uh, right move housing price index out of the UK at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday night. Australia's got their new motor vehicle sales and Japan's got revised industrial production. Again, Monday, U.S. bank holiday. So we've got trade balance out of Europe uh, before that, and then nothing here in the U.S. We've got the minutes from the last uh, Bank of Australia meeting Monday evening, and then going into Tuesday, Italian trade balance. U.K. releases all their inflationary number. They put the CPI, PPI, and RPI, and the housing price inflation index all out at once. It's different from the United States. Then we've got the zoo economic sentiment out of Europe as a whole and Germany separately. We've got uh, foreign securities purchases out of Canada, uh, GDP price index out of New Zealand. We've got mortgage delinquencies out of the U.S. That's not a big deal. The NAHB housing market index, 10 a.m. Eastern time, Tuesday. That's the first real data out of the U.S. this week. Uh, we've got uh, tick long-term purchases at the close of the stock market, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Australia's got their CB leading index and their MI leading index in the evening on Tuesday here in the States. China goes on bank holiday for the session going into Wednesday. Japan releases the minutes from their last uh, Bank of Japan policy conf uh, press conference. And then uh, we've got a rate announcement, uh, I'm sorry, the unemployment rate announcement uh, in the UK at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday. Zoo economic expectations out of Switzerland, followed by German 10-year bond auction. Then here in North America, wholesale sales out of Canada, Building permits, PPI, and housing starts here in the U.S. at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday. Capacity utilization and industrial production follows that, and then the minutes from the last Fed meeting at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. 
New Zealand releases their PPI data at 4.45 p.m. Eastern Time, and uh, now we're heading into Thursday globally. Got trade balance out of Japan. China's still on a bank holiday. Trade balance out of Switzerland. You've got the French CPI current account out of Europe. Spanish 10-year bond auction. U.S., this is the weekly unemployment claims number, not the big one. This is just the weekly number at 8.30 a.m. on Thursday Eastern Time. Consumer confidence out of Europe. Then the uh, CB leading index and the weekly natty gas number and the crude oil number here in the U.S. China goes still on bank holidays. So the about last three days of the week, China's on holiday. Manufacturing PMI out of Japan. And then for Friday in the wee hours of the morning, German PPI, French and German and broad European flash manufacturing PMI and flash services PMI data. UK releases their retail sales. Uh, Canada's their, Canada does their retail sales, and then U.S. has their flash manufacturing PMI data at 9.45 a.m., and that wraps up the week. So a light week for data. Uh, we do have options expiration here in the U.S. It is just a single expiration. doesn't have a lot of impact on the Forex market. None of our big three data, none of our first look at GDP. We do not have a Fed meeting. So none of the major data points to be worried about here in the U.S. Just a straight-up trading week, albeit a shortened one. We will be in the lab helping you make money. Please stop by. Like our videos on YouTube if you do find them useful. Have a great week.